Yeah, let's do three. I like three. Let's do three. And um, three looks like one that might be on your final. Hint, hint, hint. So maybe focus up and, and pay attention. We can definitely do that. Yeah, they're all this, they are the same thing, William. Um, three just has, yeah, a visual representation of the, the thing. So we will look at that. All right. So three says, Eliza likes to make daily events into a game of chance. She's very strange. For instance, before she went to buy ice cream at the local ice cream parlor, she created these two spinners that we see below. Now, the first has her three favorite flavors, while the second has either cone or dish. Now, Eliza will order whatever comes up on the spinner. She is a very strange girl, but that's how she wants to order her ice cream. Our question is, what is the probability that she will be eating Tutti Frutti ice cream from a dish. So she is interested in ordering Tutti Frutti ice cream from a dish. Now there are a couple ways we can work through this. We have two spinners. We have spinner number one. We have spinner number two. We could either do an area model or we could do a tree diagram. Um, it doesn't matter to me which one you guys want me to do. Is there one you would like me to do more than the other to solve this problem? So do you guys want area model or do you want tree diagram? Both work, by the way. Both both will give you the answer. I want to I had someone ask me this yesterday. Just a reminder, tree diagram and area model, they're just methods to get to the answer. The answer doesn't change based off of the method, right? It's just the how you're getting that answer. So what do you guys want me to do? A tree diagram or an area model? You get to pick. Okay, I got to vote for area model tree all the way oh no we're split a couple more votes in there okay looks like we're starting to run away with tree over here all right we'll try tree if i have time gina i'll try to show you area model as well but both methods are going to work here okay all right so for a tree diagram we have a starting point there's my starting point right there now we have our first event our first event is that we're walking up to spinner number one we're spinning spinner number one, and we want to know what the outcomes are. So how many outcomes does spinner one have? How many outcomes do we have here? Three. I see three different choices. Either we're getting vanilla, we're getting chocolate, or we're getting tutti frutti. So I'm going to go ahead and write that out. Three different branches. And those branches are representing the different flavors that you're going to get. The flavors are vanilla, chocolate, and I'll do this one as a TF for Tutti Frutti. Okay, so far so good. We got our starting point here. I'm spinning spinner one. Those are all of the three possible outcomes for spinner number one. Now, we haven't put in our fractions yet. And remember, the fractions come from the actual space that we see here and what's the chance of it landing on one or the other? Now, for this spinner, they actually all end up having the same fraction here. What is the chance of getting vanilla, chocolate, or tutti frutti? What's that fraction gonna be? Perfect, yeah, thank you, Chris. Thank you, UI, Jalen. Yeah, all of these are one out of three. They're one out of three because they're all split evenly, okay? That's, they're all split ev evenly, so I see that each of those is one-third. What we're not seeing, let me zoom out real quick. This one isn't like this, right? This is kind of like we had on the quiz, right? Where then this one would be one-half, that would be one-fourth, that would be one-fourth, right? That's kind of the difference. I know I had some students say, oh, there are three pieces here, so it's one-third, you're looking at the makeup of the area. This is half the circle. That's a fourth. That's a fourth. We're looking at over here. These are all one third. So I'm going to put that on each leg here. One third, one third, and one third. Each of those branches has a one in three chance of occurring. So we spin spinner one. You're either getting vanilla, chocolate, or tutti frutti. Now we gotta go spin number two. We spin spinner number two. How many outcomes does spinner number two have?
two, right? You're either getting a cone or you're getting a dish. That's the only two options you have. So if I spun and got a vanilla, when I spin spinner two, I'm either going to get a cone or a dish. Now I have to replicate that for the chocolate and the tutti frutti as well. I have to show that if I get chocolate now, I also have a chance of getting cone or dish. And with tutti frutti, I also have a chance of getting cone or dish. Okay, I'm showing that each flavor that I get now has options for spinner number two. Okay. Now what's the fraction going to be for cone and for dish? It ends up being the same here. What's the chance of getting a cone or a dish with this spinner here? So yeah, it is definitely one half, right? One half because each of these options here make up one half of that circle. So all along my tree diagram here, I need to write one halves because each of those branches has a one half chance of occurring, okay? That is our tree diagram. We have made our tree diagram. We see all of the possible outcomes. I can get vanilla in a cone, vanilla in a dish, chocolate in a cone, chocolate in a dish, tutti frutti in a cone, tutti frutti in a dish. Those are all of the possible outcomes for this event. Okay, before I go on any further, any questions with how I set up that tree diagram? Okay, I'm not seeing any. So I'm gonna move ahead with it and I'm gonna move on with it because the question asked us, what is the probability that she will be eating tutti frutti ice cream from a dish? So all that I'm concerned about with this tree diagram is looking at my starting point and following the path that shows her getting tutti frutti in a dish. We see that that's the path that we actually care about. That's the path that shows you she got tutti frutti and she got it in a dish. So what I have to do now, and I'm gonna kind of slide this over, whoops, go away. I'm gonna slide this over real quick over here and zoom in a little bit. That's the path that we're concerned about. We wanna know what's the probability of her getting tutti frutti with a dish. And now I need to take those two fractions that I go along that path. It's one third, it's one half. So I take the one third and I take the one half. As I move along the path, I need to multiply those. So remember when you multiply fractions, you're multiplying the numerator and then you multiply the denominator. So one third, times one half ends up equaling what? <laughs> we're, not asking, we're not contemplating why she wants tutti frutti in a dish. That's just, that's her MO, that's what she wants. Yeah, so one times one gives you one on the top. Three times two gives you six on the bottom. The probability of her getting tutti frutti in a dish is one sixth. That's how we do the problem with a tree diagram. Now. And I could, I could write this right here, right? One six. All of these end up being one six because all of the fractions are the same. But you don't have to fill out the entire tree diagram if you're only concerned about one path, right? All I care about here is tutti frutti in a dish. So that's why I highlighted that path to show that it's gonna be one six, okay? I don't care about vanilla in a cone or chocolate in a dish. All I'm gonna do is look at that bottom part there. So the people in math problems are incredibly strange. I agree. I absolutely agree. I'm gonna quickly show you the area model um, just to show you that it doesn't matter which method you use, just as long as you're using the method correctly. So real quick, I'll go, I'm gonna do a little faster with this. Vanilla, chocolate, tutti frutti. Remember we knew all of these were one third. So if I wanted to make an area model to show this, I could show that those are the three options there. And then she's either picking a dish or a cone. So we have that there. We knew that each of those was one half. Again, the area model is ready to go. I'm only interested in tutti frutti in a dish. 
So I only care about that right there. So then I just do one third times one half and we still get one six. So Gina, I know you had asked for, I think it was you, you asked for the area model. There's the area model. Same thing, right? You're, we're still getting the same answer. It's just how you're setting it up and finding it. Sometimes area models are easier. And I'm gonna say for this problem, that was way easier to make, right? Area model, super easy to make. Tree diagram, a little more extensive. You have to do a little more work, a little more setup to see every single possibility. But like I mentioned, and like you saw in your quiz, there are sometimes problems that are easier for one method than the other, okay? For example, that rat problem we did, that rat problem in the maze, the tree diagram was the way to go. It was just way easier to use that. For this problem, I probably would just use the area model. That's just me. All righty, that's a good probability review question. Are there any other concerns with this problem that I might be able to address now before we move on to another concept. For the record, problems two and number one, exactly the same idea here. Figuring out, are you using area model? Or are you using tree diagram? That's up to you, but it's gonna be very similar setup there.